Hey, it's Tango Oscar Mike, and I want to revisit this idea I had about kind of gaming uh, exercises and drills to make them more interesting. And I had the idea, initially the idea, uh, which I mentioned in another video, if you want to go watch that, was to create a card game. And you would hit, basically hand out cards, but since, you know, we're going to be working with various counties and you know different organizations and we don't always see each other in person i started to think about other ways that we could do this and i thought about you know maybe doing a website where you could get information and uh you know get assignments that way but I, i've come up with something which i think is a lot easier and anybody could do it and they can implement this really easy uh for the next exercise and I'm trying to get people on board for our upcoming SCT to give it a shot. I know uh, one group is actually going to be doing a tabletop exercise um, using this method to see if it works just on a tabletop method. And the basic premise is uh, no matter what the scenario is we're always given tasks with doing our job as communicators and uh, the idea is you have a bunch of resources. Some of them you have, some of them you need. And your job is to contact other counties to try to get the resources you need. And other counties will be calling you to try to get the resources you have. Uh, and the, the trick is how do you get, how do you figure out which county needs which resource and which resources you have on hand? And I've kind of come up with a way with doing that using some good old six-sided dice. This is uh, just a, an old dice game I have for hiking called Blisters. And I'm just going to pull out a couple of six-sided dice here. And I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to try to show you the sheet, the worksheet that I created to kind of get you started with all of this. Okay, so this is the worksheet that I created. Uh, it's it's pretty simple. Uh, you have columns, you have resource, on hand, required, and acquired. Um, there are 11 resources here. The, the reason there's 11 is because the lowest number you can roll on the dice is a 2, and the highest is a 12. So the numbering starts at 2 and goes to 12, but there's Cots, meals, water, blankets, pillows, sanitation kits, uh, fuel, first aid kit, flashlight, batteries, and PPE, personal protection equipment. Uh, you could put in, you could change this to whatever resources you wanted. But the trick is to how, how do you get those resources assigned to your group? So basically you would hand these a sheet out or they, they could go out to a, a website and print it out. Uh, and what you do is you take your dice and you roll your dice. So <laughs> I rolled a 12. So uh, the directions tell you, you multiply that, uh, or 12, that gives me the PPE. So I have PPE gear, or I, that's going to be what I required. And then I just rolled a 7, so I'm going to need sanitation kits, or hygiene kits, whatever you want to call it. So then what I do is I roll again. I rolled a 9. I multiply that by 10. So I get 90 that I need. And I have you, because I rolled this, pick that resource. When I rolled, that's the, I have none on hand. That's the idea. And the same with PPE. I have zero on hand. I rolled a 5, so I need 50 of those. And the numbers really aren't important. It's the whole process of doing this. Um, so you could do more if you wanted to, but I suggest just starting out with two. Um, so for the rest of these, I don't need anything. Um, I don't need any of these resources, so I'm just marking them off. Now, what you want to do is other people will be contacting you looking for resources. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll for numbers for all these columns. And this you do a little different. So instead of this being 6, uh, this is going to be 33. So I'm going to say that I have 33 on hand. Then for the next one, same thing. Take the largest number first. So for this one, I have 64. So for meals, I have 64 on hand. 
And I'm going to keep doing this down the string. Always take the largest number first, 32. I have 32 of these. 42. <laughs> 32. 32 again. I think these dice are fixed. I didn't know these were cheating dice. 42. Wow. 55, 53. So as you can see now, uh, if I, so what I would do now is I would contact one of the other counties or one of the other sites that I was playing along with. Uh, I would use their IC205 form with their in communications instructions on it, I would reach out to them using an official form, whether that be a radiogram or some other request form, uh, either through voice or digital, whatever their 205 has on there is their means of contact. And I would request 90 sanitation kits from them. Now on their side, they're gonna have the same thing. They may have they may only have 33 sanitation kits, so I would get 33 from them. Just This is just an example. I might get 33 from them, so then I would have to contact another county. And let's see, maybe that county had uh, 65. So uh, I've already reached my my kits. I've already gotten enough to fulfill my needs. So I would take what I had. So I would take all of them from this, this one, but from this one, uh, I don't need their full amount. I would only take what I would need. I would leave them with a little bit left over in case another county, uh, needed that equipment because it is possible that with the more counties playing or the more participants, you could have more, uh, Duplicate resources, so more than one person may be trying to get those resources. Uh, also, I could request PPE. Let's see how many PPE they had. They had 62 PEE, PPE, so um, I need 50 of them, and they're left with the rest. So they, they would have 12 left. Uh, and that's the premise. The lowest amount you could start with uh, as a required would be 20. Um, because if you roll snake eyes, times that by 10. Uh, and you could change this amount too, um, which I might do. I might consider bumping it up. But uh, So if I roll this when I'm setting up my required, I multiply that by 10, that gives me 20. If I roll six, uh, two twelves, or two sixes, that's 12, that's 120. So the range of the required could be 20 to 120. Now... On hand for those fields, because we're adding, the lowest you could have would be 11, and the highest you could have would be 66. So, depending on what you rule, uh, if you ruled 120 and you got 66, you would have to get at least uh, two counties to help you out if they had that whole resource. Uh, if a county rolled 11 and you had 120, obviously you would have to make a lot of contacts, but the chances of rolling snake eyes, every county rolling snake eyes is pretty slim. And if they, if you rule any, anything else, so even if you rule a 12 or a, a one and a two, uh, you always take the highest number first. So that becomes 21. So even that's not that bad. And then it goes up from there. So the next, uh, anything over three would be 32. So as you can see it, it, the numbers increase fast. So more than likely, you're only going to need to contact, um, you know, three to four counties to get all the resources you need, unless there's another county with a duplicate that could be taking all the resources you need. And the, the object is to try to get as many resources as you need, not to, um, not to win. You know, it's just to give you a goal for you to reach, which we lack a lot of times in these exercises. 
So one thing I wanted to bring up is if you have multiple stations at your location, so say I'm at the county EOC and I have somebody doing uh, a VHF net for local, uh, they may also be doing digital as well. Uh, I might have somebody doing 80 meters voice. And I might have somebody doing 40 meters digital. So how do you, you have to have somebody you have to have somebody coordinating those resource requests. Um, and you might be able to reach another county on VHF. So, but more than likely, in most cases, um, you're probably going to reach them over voice or digital. So what you may want to do is assign a resource manager who says, okay, I want this station to request this resource from one county. Uh, in the meantime, a request may be coming in from the digital station that says, hey, this other county needs COTS. And the resource manager would have to use the sheet and keep track of all the resources they gave out uh, or the resources they requested. Uh, you wouldn't want this person requesting from the same county as this person because uh, you're wasting your time and you're wasting your communications efforts. Um, and if you can't get them through VHF, maybe then you go to voice, you know, that kind of thing. So you may need somebody to help keep track of that. You want to keep track of all the forms sent and received for your exercise, uh, for your thing. Uh, I also came up with the idea that you could have local uh, net check-ins participate as well. When somebody checks in, you could roll one of the dice for them. Okay, okay, I got three resources from them. Uh, the next person checks in, you got four resources. Next person checks in, you got one resource. So depending on how many people check in, you might get enough from your local to fulfill your resource request that you need to acquire. So that's it. That's my idea. Uh, like I said, every participating agencies would get one of these worksheets. Uh, they could prepare it ahead of time by rolling the dice. Uh, there's also free phone apps. I have one on my phone called Just a Dice. Uh, I can set it for two dice and I can roll the dice. You know, it's just a simple phone app to do that. Um, but it is, there are free apps out there. Um, but you could prepare this before the event. You don't want to share this with another county. Um, the idea is they don't know what you have and you're not, you don't want to just get on your first transmission of the drill to be, oh, these are all the things I have on hand that I could loan to you. Cause you would never do that in an emergency. Um, uh, basically you would be responding to the resources, resource requests from other counties, uh, and other agencies, etc. cetera. Uh, I kind of base this off Red Cross because that's what a lot we do. We do a lot of interaction with them, but you could have resources, any types of resources in here, fire trucks, police units, uh, ambulances, um, hospital beds, whatever, whatever you wanted to put in as a resource. If you had a lot of counties participating, you may want to do another, you know, more resources than here, than what's here. I would just do it as another set of 11 and roll those separately. Um, just so it's an easy way to keep them and, and add more. But if you had that many counties participating. This setup here, I kind of figured it out that this is probably, this is good for, uh, I wouldn't do this with less than four counties. Uh, otherwise I don't think it would be worth your time. Uh, I don't think you'd be able to get all your resources and everything. Um, so I would say this is good for like four to eight counties participating. Uh, again, you may get some duplicates in here. You could probably do more than that. You could get some people duplicates. Uh, I mean, it's possible that everybody could rule two and everybody could need cots, but uh, I think the chances of that are pretty, pretty slim. Uh, I, th I think that once you contact four different counties, uh, even if you don't get all your numbers, uh, you could 
basically assume that your resources was met. Um, you know, but that's my idea. So that's the basic premise I have for this kind of game. It's kind of like Go Fish. Um, I'm only... I only did two resources here that I would require, that I would need. You could do more. You could do three or four. Um, I probably wouldn't do any more than that um, because those take away from the resources that other people can get from you as well. Uh, you could add to this list and make it much longer. But I think this would be a lot of fun. I think it would generate a lot of traffic and give you a purpose. You know, during these exercises, you can't always reach the other counties that you're trying to reach. Maybe somebody else can, so I could see putting in a relay, but do a specific relay. You could send a message and say, hey, there's a resource request form. We need this to go to, you know, you know, one of the other counties, you know, please relay. And that request form could go to them. Uh, you could have a you could have a center hub doing all the traffic handling for everybody if you wanted to. Uh, you could have everybody send their messages to them and their request, and they would have to handle it. That would be pretty hectic. You'd have to have a lot of people at that other site to to coordinate all that message transfer. But I think that's where something doing something like this could really enhance any exercises and drills and give you a real purpose as to what you were doing, not just making up fictitious traffic that really doesn't have any meaning. Meaning, And the numbers you don't have to be exact, you know, you're not going to have 120 police units or something like that as a resource, but it's not about the actual resource. You could call them, you know, resource one, resource two, resource three, if you wanted to. Um, or make it fun, you know, uh, gold, silver, or whatever. But the idea is that it's just that amount, and you have to match those amounts going f through uh, the system. And uh, hopefully it would be fun during an event. Uh, I'm going to try to get some people together to do this as a tabletop. I've kind of done it myself by setting up several worksheets and kind of working through it. And uh, I actually thought it worked really well. I thought it was kind of neat, and I thought that it would be really easy to implement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a this worksheet. I have a PDF of this worksheet with the basic instructions and some rules that I put on here. Um, I'll put a link in the description so you can go out and download it for yourself and maybe try it with your ham radio group. Uh, like I said, a tabletop exercise would be pretty good because it could also give you practice with filling out forms or radiograms. Uh, and basically you would just hand them around the table and the person would have to hand them back, that type of, that type of thing. Um, but I kind of see this being as a, uh, you could use this for tabletop exercises too, almost becoming like a game. Uh, I don't want to make something that people have to buy or purchase. You can get a ton of dice off of Amazon super cheap if you wanted to get dice for everybody. Uh, or if you don't have an old board game or something like that. Everybody remembers Yahtzee, right? Um, and you could use your phone to simulate a dice rolling application. There's a lot of ways to do this. And all you would have to do is either print out this sheet or just get a piece of paper and write down the resources you want and number them and just do it that way. Uh, so you don't have to have anything special to, to do this or participate. Uh, if a county showed up, if uh, all of a sudden you had another county that showed up and wanted to participate, you could basically explain it to them pretty quickly over the air or, you know, send them some instructions and say, hey, here's the resources, create your list. But, uh, no, I, I would love to hear from other people, uh, other Aries people, other uh, emergency coordinators, uh, district managers, uh, district coordinators or section coordinators to see what they think about this. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to get the, my area, Western Pennsylvania. I'm hoping that I can get some interest and get some other counties to use this for the next, um, simulated emergency test, which is only a few weeks away, but yeah, I, I just want to make these more fun, and I want us to have a real purpose as to what we're actually doing during these events, and not just some, um, you know, made-up traffic. Oh, the, you know, we got two inches of rain, and, you know, it's kind of all over the place. Again, I think this just would give us a clear path and a clear goal to achieve during the exercise. So... 
I hope you found this helpful and I'd love to hear from you what you think about this. Hey, just a reminder, I'm not monetizing my videos. If you'd like to support my, uh, my videos, go to the club website that I belong to. It's Washington Amateur Communications. The club website is wa3com.com. That's whiskey alpha 3 charlieoscarmikecom I'll put a link in the description. On the club info tab, there's a link to a PayPal account where you can either join and become a member, or you could just make a donation. You can tell them that... Uh, N3WS sent you, and uh, it helps me out because they're the ones that got me into ham radio, and they're the ones that are keeping me active. I, it's a great club, and I'm proud to be a member of that club. So, if you uh, feel like it, go make a donation or join the club. This is Tango Oscar Mike saying 73, and have a great weekend.